Good morning and welcome to another episode of Morning Java brought to you as always by our friends at the Getco Cafe and Market where they put a lot of meat on their subs and I can't wait to get back across the turnpike to get my hands on one of these. Uh, as you can see from the very few banners up in the rafters here, we're, uh, we're still in Philadelphia and we're here to talk hockey, Dave and I. Uh, the Penguins... This was game 50. A lot of people are going to refer to this as you know, the end of the first half. This was game 50. Other than the fact that they're still missing some guys, notably Jake Gensel, for the foreseeable future, could they possibly, could they have conceived of having a, a fir first 50 games like this? I don't think so. I mean, when you consider the you know, over 200 man games lost, virtually all of them the guys who matter who matter yeah and uh that they are within striking distance of, of first place not only in the division but in the overall standings uh the disappointment of, of game 50 aside it yeah. really has been an extraordinary uh successful start to the season for them yeah, i guess if, if i had to put one facet atop everything else it's that the system came back into play, you know, well, the system that they won with. And it did. And, it, I mean, it was really a matter of survival for, for them to yeah. give the, the buy-in that uh, the system that Mike Sullivan and his staff taught, you know, that it requires to make that happen. If, I mean, if they just tried to get by on the ability of, of their personnel it, it wasn't going to work. This, no, they, they, they'd they, be playing for draft position. They, right they weren't going to Andrew Agazino their no. way through this oh. stretch. Um, I, I just the guys that that I have come to respect even more through this process. There's been a lot, and, and, and rightly so, praise for Mike Sullivan and the coaching staff and the job they've done. But the team leaders, oh, I, and Sidney I, Crosby, uh, even when he was hurt. Uh, Crystal Tang, who doesn't get nearly enough credit, mm -hmm. I, I don't think, for the, the kind of leader that he is in the room. Patrick Hornquist, these mm -hmm. guys, Evgeny Malkin, these right. guys all had to do this. Right. I mean, the, the coach can't force the buy-in. It has to come from in, it does. Know, inside the room, Ultimately. from the players. Mm -hmm. And the players generally follow the example set by the leaders. And in the case of this team, the leaders have set an exemplary example i mean they've they've been outstanding they've got you know they've they've set the tone and they and they got their teammates to follow along and that's why the season has, has been so successful and remains so promising uh, you know, yeah it does and not to mention the they might now go into these final 32 games coming out of the break with not one goaltender playing well but both well, Matt Murray certainly seems to be getting his game back in order. Uh, Tristan Jari in game 50 is certainly not the reason they lost this game. He gave them some semblance of a chance to win it. It would have been easier if he would have actually scored a goal himself since his teammates didn't seem terribly interested in doing that. But, uh, no, I mean, if, if you can have two strong goaltenders going for you in the stretch drive, That'll make a lot of things possible. Not to mention having a head coach who has experience in navigating yes. two number one goaltenders. Um, I, you know, there's now going to be a nitpicking, including by people like us. Uh, every time Sullivan chooses his goalie, it's going to feel like news for that day, and it, and, it, and it did before this game, where you know, oh, he chose Jari. Well, you know, the other day it was he chose Murray, and it was his second time or first time back to backs in two mm. months or whatever uh, this coach knows how to work not only with the hot hand but also how to manage the guy who might not be the hot right hand. and and you know it, it's not you don't have a clearly inferior backup in, in this situation it's only logical to try to get them both a decent amount of work. Certainly, if one guy is playing better than the other, then you go with the hot hand. But there's no, you know, no problem giving them both work. And, and you know, the worst thing that can come out of that is you're going to have two guys who are relatively fresh in the in the playoffs. If you would happen to need both, then so it's just a win-win for for everyone yeah, in every see, regard. See, the future's bright. Lighten up, everybody. It's not the end of the world. Your team has a whole lot more banners than what we're looking at back here. And we're so do most. <laughs>
Thank you.